behind me, there will be some kitten chaos, I think. Yes. <laughs> okay. Let's see what happens next. So now Panda is in the drawer and Nikula is on his way. All right. so good morning. Welcome back to the morning immersion. We're going to be exploring the yama called daya, D-A-Y-A. Um, it is the sixth of the yamas. There are 10 yamas and 12 niyamas. And daya in its classical translation means compassion or mercy. And so I wanna unpack that a little bit with you this morning. So go ahead and rest your hands in your lap. You're welcome to close your eyes. And let me just check my audio setting, make sure it's clear for you. Okay, good. Great. Please come to your upright and comfortable seat. And rest your hands in your lap as you like, or since we're gonna be discussing compassion and mercy, you could put one hand on the heart if you have that inclination or one hand on the low belly or some configuration that feels like a good gesture for you. and then lengthen up through your spine. Allow your shoulder blades to relax down the upper back. And as you become more connected to the present moment, let your awareness then go more inward to the subtlety of the breath, the subtlety of this inhale and this exhale. Move the breath towards a subtle form of ujjayi breathing and listen for the smoothness of the sound that you can cultivate. You cultivate this sound, you could imagine that as if you were yogurt and you were pouring a drizzle of honey into it. Then as you stir, the honey and the yogurt become one. So the ujjayi breath is like that process of stirring so that the mind and the body come into the present. And you become one with this inner wisdom, a kind of inner deep abiding presence. In the translation, daya means compassion or mercy. And in the Brahma Viharas, we also hear the word karuna, which as well means compassion. So it's understood that this quality in our hearts is one of the native capacities that we have. It's intrinsic to us. Our neurological system is wired for it. 
our minds and bodies, our emotions, our feeling tones, everything is connected in this way. And we have a natural and inherent capacity for compassion. With this in your awareness, please join your hands together at your heart. And we're gonna chant Om Namah Shivaya Gurave. The inner teacher is comprised of truth, wisdom, and bliss, Sat Chidananda. And this inner teacher can also help us to dispel our forgetfulness or our detours and come back to peace, Shantai, and luminosity, Tejas. Let's begin. Om Namah Shivaya Gurave Satchirananda Murtaya Nish Prapanchaya Shantaya Niralambaya Tejase Om Namah Shivaya Gurave Satchirananda Murtaya Nish Prapanchaya Shantaya Niralambaya Tejase Om Namah Shivaya Gurave Satchirananda Murtaya Nish Prapanchaya Shantaya Niralambaya Tejase Om Shanti Om Shanti Shanti Om So you may bow your head to your heart and release your hands. So the way I'd like us to explore this quality this morning is in sensing its naturalness to us as a, a capacity, as a species, I'd like us to imagine, since we tend to associate compassion with the heart or the heart center, I'd like us to imagine that what circulates through us as we're cleansing through these practices, what is circulating through us becomes this sort of renewable resource of compassion, rather than what's circulating is the stress and the biochemistry of the hormones that end up being the residue, that end up being the symptoms that kind of cloud our vision and our hearts from that compassion. So the word compassion means a with, C-O-M means to be with, like communion or communication. Compassion means to be with suffering, to have our capacity to be with passion, like the movie that came out many, many years ago, The Passion of Christ. It was about the suffering. And this suffering we talk about in yoga as having five forms, the five kleshas. And the first form of suffering is the most painful and the one that we can address, let's say first, so that we're preventing the others from cascading into action. So the first cause of suffering is forgetting our indwelling nature. It's called avidya, forgetting this indwelling wisdom or vidya, this inner knowing of who we are, the inner knowing of what everything is, which yoga points to that as consciousness or grace or love. So if we say, Om Namah Shivaya Gurave, the inner teacher is with us. Satchitananda Murtaya, the teacher is made of Satchitananda, truth, wisdom, and bliss. Nishrapanchaya Shantaya. This teacher can dispel this forgetfulness or this darkness or this um, 
kind of uh, ignorance is actually the word for it. it. We can help dispel that and bring back peace, Shantaya. Niralambaya tejase. And we also bring back this unconditional Niralambaya tejas, this unconditional luminosity or brightness. So let's see to it. You'll need a strap for class today. You can scoot your blankets aside or you could store them for now, actually. I think I will do that. <laughs> I still have a kitten in this drawer back here. So I will. Hi. Yes, I see you in there. I will leave her to be in there. Please come up to standing. I'll have to add a blanket to the drawer. It's a, it's basically a wooden drawer. So that's what she's snuggling up in right now. So make a loop in your strap, please, so that your hands can be shoulder width apart like this. And take the strap behind you. Bring your hands so that your palms face each other. Roll the shoulders back and give a good strong squeeze of the arms back so that you sense the movement that comes from your shoulders, not from your elbows or your wrists. And as you lift up with the heart and squeeze the arms back, root down with your tailbone, energize your legs. Come into the ujjayi breath again, the subtle form of ujjayi. With the base of your skull, so you can slide your head slightly back on top of your spine. Lift your heart front, side to side, and back, not just on the front side. Now, as you keep the arms in the strap, please bend your knees, bring your torso over your thighs. Raise your arms up towards the ceiling and overhead. Relax the weight of your head so the neck has some traction. Squeeze your shoulders up away from your ears and your shoulder blades in towards your spine. And then glide your heart forward, raise up to standing. Catch the strap with one hand, let the arms dangle. And imagine that from your heart, what circulates out is this quality natural to you, renewable, an inner resource of compassion. Maybe even just compassion for all that your body goes through in a day everything that you have to do and the physical body sometimes gets tired or feels compromised. Take the strap in front now and raise your arms up overhead. And as you're pressing up with the strap, rotate your triceps in towards your nose so your pinkies are turning towards the center line. You could imagine that you're widening your thumbs and also affecting the shoulder blades to be wider on the upper back. Root down into both heels and make a little side bend to your left. Now, when you make the side bend, don't let the left arm pull on the right arm. Use the weight of the left arm as resistance or leverage for your right arm. Make the right arm strong, in other words, and the breath smooth. Now rise up to center, balance the effort of the arms and come over to your right side for the side bend, increase the effort of the left arm. You're down through your left hip into your left leg and your heel. And as you exhale, use your left low belly to anchor yourself as you rise up. Float your arms forward, catch the strap in one hand and deeply relax your mind, 
your neck, your shoulders, arms, hands, fingers, and thumbs. You now take a smaller loop, depending on the length of your strap, you might have to use more um, strap to make the loop. If you have a short strap, in other words, take the right hand in the strap base and raise this up overhead. Now with the right arm up, again, I'd like you to turn your tricep in towards your nose and then reach back with your left hand and give resistance to the strap. Raise up through the right arm Loop down through your tailbone and then begin to make a little feeling of a back bend in the upper back primarily. Use the tension of the strap to reach up with your right arm. It should not feel like you're creasing the spine or hinging at a certain vulnerable spot in your lower back. Now draw yourself up to center, loosen the strap with your left hand, bring the right arm forward and down, chain to the other side, let the right arm dangle so you can feel the circulation returning to your right hand. And then raise your left arm up, reach back with the right hand, secure the, the resistance on the strap with your right arm, Root down through your tailbone. And as you raise up, think about a little feeling of a back bend as if you were a tall blade of grass, the upper part of the grass moving in a gentle breeze. So raise up, lower your left arm forward and down. And again, notice the circulation moving down your left arm. Sensing that as something natural to us, that that circulation can be returned. I'd like you to take a seat and we're going to do a little bit of cleansing pranayama. I'm just making a slightly thicker blanket, so I'll just use one and I folded it in thirds. You, of course, can make your own seat however you prefer. So come to your upright position. Now we're going to be using circulation, so we'll go up with the inhale, down with the exhale. And that's a rapid breath that happens through the nose, both inhale and exhale. Okay, it's fists on the way down, fingers on the way up. Let's begin. Inhale up. Exhale out to the side. Rest your hands in your lap. At your pace, of course. Inhale up. 
inhale. Exhale. Deeply relax. Notice your arms, hands, fingers, and thumbs. And that the recirculation that's happening is both the inner system that takes out the <laughs> garbage and recycling and the debris. It's also that your heart is circulating that quality called daya back out through the arms into your hands, your fingers, your thumbs. You raise your hands to your shoulders. This is for Kapalabhati, left, right, left, right. Also at your pace. Five, four, three, two, one, come to center and inhale up to suspension. smoothly and completely in your own timing. Like the entire body and the mind be quiet as you just witness the echo of the experience. Bring the right hand up and close the right nostril with Nadi Shodhana. Begin, inhale left, then exhale right, then inhale right and exhale left. We'll do four rounds of Nadi Shodhana, which is eight breath cycles.
Move smoothly at the pace that you're working. And aim to balance your inhale with your exhale where you're able to. with your next exhale through the left nostril. the feeling tone of the mind and the feeling sense of the heart. Take this with us as we come to table pose. No longer have a kitten in this drawer, so I'm gonna close it. Okay, please come to table pose and leave space behind and in front of you. So space behind for this version of Corvotanasana and then space in front for Salambhasana. And please inhale to cat pose. Exhale, cow pose. Step your right hand well ahead of you. Reach your hips back and bow your left elbow to the floor. Inhale to a cat pose spine. Exhale to a cow pose spine. So there's an undulation in your pose. This is called one arm puppy dog pose because we don't have another name for it. Once more, exhale to more of a cat pose spine, reach the hips back, the heart forward. And then inhale, return to cat pose. And exhale to cow pose. Take your left hand well ahead of your right. As you reach back, lower your right elbow to the floor and let's inhale to cat pose. Exhale to cow pose at your own pace, of course. You just sense the, the river like quality of the breath and the spine. This kind of undulation should feel smooth and nourishing to your body. Inhale to cat pose. 
Exhale, cow pose. And then reach back to child's pose. Now in your child's pose where you have your shins, hips and hands present, let's keep them at this particular distance and see if it makes sense for the distance to be also your plank pose and cobra pose, for example. So we're gonna inhale, roll forward from cat to table. And then exhale to plank. Inhale, chaturanga. Exhale onto the floor, point your toes. Inhale, cobra, bhujangasana. Exhale, glide down, sweep your arms straight back. Inhale, Salambhasana. Exhale, release your hands to the floor underneath your shoulders. Inhale, Cobra. And exhale, lower down, take the arms straight back and clasp your fingers. Inhale, Salambhasana. Exhale, place your hands beneath your shoulders. And now inhale up to cow pose. Exhale, cat pose. Inhale, reach back to child's pose. And exhale, squeeze the lower belly in child's pose. Inhale, cat to table. Exhale, plank. Inhale, chaturanga. Exhale, onto the floor, point your toes. Inhale, bhujangasana, roll up. Exhale, glide down. Keep the legs grounded. Reach back to interlace your fingers. Inhale, rise up. Exhale, lower down. Place your palms under your shoulders. Inhale, Bhujangasana. Exhale, smoothly down. Clasp the hands. Inhale, Salambhasana. Exhale, lower down. Now inhale to cat. I'm sorry, cow. And then exhale to cat pose, press into your arms and your knees. Inhale, reach back towards child's pose. Keep the hands fixed where they are. And exhale, squeeze the lower belly. Now walk your hands back to your knees. Inhale, roll up to kneeling. Take your hands so your fingers are going to point towards your hips and your feet and roll open. Exhale, come to Vajrasana. And you could ask yourself in terms of the naturalness of compassion, what is your sense of your relationship to that quality right now? Please come onto your seat. Place your feet on the floor in front of you. You can reach the arms forward to start like this. Place the feet so they're hip distance apart and then slide your hands back and place your fingers to point towards your hips and your feet. 
roll back so the heels of the hands are coming down towards the floor. And then bend the elbows, scoot your hips forward and stretch into the shoulders. So the shoulders are gonna squeeze back towards the elbows, raise your heart up, even though it will feel limited to you, can you find the action for that? Slowly work the arms towards straight. So you're gonna be moving not just the shoulder joint, but also the elbows, the wrists, the knuckles. As the arms become straight, press down into your heels and raise your hips up to reverse table pose. Lay your head back on the upper trapezius muscles. And then inhale, lower your hips down. Keep the chest and heart lifted. And exhale, raise up to your seat, reach your arms forward, turn your palms face up. So notice the circulation that goes down the hands and the arms. Okay, we're gonna repeat that. So take the arms back, come into the heels of the hands, bend the elbows. Scoot your hips forward. So you've got the lumbar spine in flexion, but you could bring the knees to the chest so you know your lumbar spine is in flexion, but the shoulders and the upper back are going into extension. So raise your heart, squeeze the shoulders back towards the elbows. And then as you next inhale, begin to straighten the arms slowly. Lift the heart and the collarbones, and then raise your hips up, reverse table pose. I know it might not be an easy pose. Let's exhale, lower the hips down. This time, raise your left arm forward, turn your right hand to point backwards. And then exhale, twist your left arm across your right knee. And as you rotate to your right, press the left elbow and the right knee against each other. So that's gonna make the twist more secure. A little bit of leverage as you turn, look over your right shoulder. Roll the right shoulder back and start playing, placing the right palm flat down. So you've got this opening right through here in the shoulder. And then press into both feet, raise up. And exhale, bring your left arm across your face on the way back down to your twist. So you place the elbow again across your knee Come back up to your fingertips and twist to your right. And then rotate around to face forward. Take the left fingertips behind you, right arm forward. Raise the right arm up. Twist to your left. Listen for how smoothly the breath can come and go. We're working really specifically in the chest, the heart and the shoulders, the upper back. And this might be an area of tension or limitation for you. So even notice during the practice how you bring a quality of like mercy or compassion to your body. Place the left palm flat down, raise the right arm up, raise your hips. And keep looking down towards the floor on your left, though some of you may enjoy looking up. And then bring your right arm across your face. Keep the left shoulder stable as you touch your hips back down and reach forward. And then cross the ankles and come to Sukhasana. 
And in Sukhasana, take your hands out over your knees. So your, your arms are gonna be limp and the wrists and fingers hang loosely. And notice what's happening in your hands. Can you feel the pulsation in your body right down to your fingers and thumbs? Okay, please rise up to standing with your yoga strap. You can keep the tiny loop in the strap and place it nearby. Come to the top of your mat, please. And join your palms together at your heart. Okay, so with the breath now, this ujjayi breath, let it be your kind of monitor for yourself that you don't over effort or under effort and you don't pull into distraction or daydreaming and really stay in the heart with this quality of compassion or mercy, even towards the limitations in your body or compassion for the part of you that goes to craving or resistance to the other forms of suffering. Certainly compassion for the part of you that forgets your most indwelling nature. So with your ujjayi breath, sweep the arms up or vahastasana. We exhale uttanasana. Inhale, glide your heart forward. Exhale, left toes back. Put your left hand in the strap. Inhale, rise up. Take the strap with the right hand behind to close the chain to give some resistance. Reach up with the left arm. Listen inside to the breath and make the efforts of the body suited to the effort that's required. So neither over-efforting nor under-efforting. And then exhale, sweep the left arm forward as you come down, place your strap to the side and step backwards to dog pose. Okay, exhale forward to plank pose. Step over one foot and inhale to upward facing dog pose. Step over the other foot as well. Exhale plank. Inhale downward dog. Exhale left foot forward. Put your right hand in the strap. Inhale rise up. Touch the strap with the left hand and provide resistance. Open your heart, open your throat, lift your gaze. Make the just right amount of effort. So align with your body's capacities and needs and the intention of the practice. And then as you exhale, start sliding forward. Release your yoga strap and inhale, step backwards to dog pose. Okay, exhale forward to plank pose. Inhale to upward facing dog pose. Plank pose, downward facing dog, awkward foot forward, second foot forward, Uttanasana. Rising up, hands to the heart. Uttanasana. 
Heart forward. Left toes back. Sachidananda Mortaya. Rising up. Nish Prapanchaya Shantaya. Moving forward. Niralambaya Tejase. Downward dog. Exhale, plank. Upward dog. Plank. Inhale, downward facing dog. Exhale, left foot forward. Taking the trap with the right hand, inhale to rise. Om Namah Shivaya Gurave. Going forward. Sachananda Murtaya. Step your right foot forward. Uttanasana. Nish Prapanchaya Shandaya. Rising to the heart. Niralambaya Tejase. Practice bring us back to this unconditional luminosity and inner sense of peace. May we remember these indwelling capacities of the heart. Use your hands, and I'd like to have two blankets and two blocks. And um, also bring with you a smile. So we'll take the two blankets and we'll fold them. So we're going to sit on the blankets on the front edge in what we call zazen, which is also much like sitting in vajrasana. One of the differences when you sit in zazen is that your knees are hip distance apart. So you've got your two blocks here. You're probably going to need them. I mean, I don't know, you'll find out. So let's put the right foot like this. Okay. Raise the left arm up. You twist across. This is not yet where you need the blocks. And twisting, twisting poses are cleansing poses. So sense again, like, what can you squeeze out of the sponge of the body that you've been holding on to? And as you squeeze that out, can you apply a gentle dose of compassion to it? And what can you bring in during the inhalation? Now rotate to face towards whatever's the front for you. In my case, it's the east. And then I'd like you to walk backwards and take one block, this one here. I'm going to put on my, on my blankets on the flat setting, or you could put it on the medium setting. And that goes for your shoulder blades. The left knee should stay on the floor, pointing straight ahead. It should not go out to the side. Take the other block. Place it behind your head. And bring it down as a support. So what I'm doing is also putting my hands underneath that block. So I went 
on the back side of the block so the elbows get to go up towards the ceiling and overhead. Lengthen your tailbone towards your left knee. It's possible that you're stretching your quadriceps and your hip flexors right now. If your head is stable and the block is stable, then take the arms overhead and reach them towards the wall behind you. Keep lengthening the tailbone towards your left knee. So you, you can feel if you tone the left butt muscles, you'll be asking the hip flexors on the front side to open. And then reach back to hold your block with your hands. Remove the block, use your hands on the floor to come up. And now take the left leg out to Dandasana. Notice the circulation going down your left leg. That's also a cleansing. Take the left hand around and twist to your right. You may find it comfortable to place the left arm across your left knee. You may find that that's not adding to your experience in the twist, in which case don't apply it, don't do it. Do what feels like it's nourishing your pose, not what you feel like you have to struggle with to attain. And let's come around to face forward. Take the right leg out to Dandasana and notice the circulation going down the right leg also. Now the left leg is going to come up like Marichyasana and the right foot goes into Virasana. There's your foot and your toes. Okay, take the right hand across, twist it to your left. And then the squeezing of the body in this kind of twist. Again, you can cross your elbow over the outside of the opposite knee if it adds to your experience. If it only adds struggle, then don't do it. Stay with what's nourishing. Rotate around to face forward. Oh, hello, Bindi. Thanks for coming to class. <laughs> now we're gonna take the block on the blankets, maybe on the flat, maybe on the medium setting. And as you walk backwards, you want that block to be there for your shoulder blades. And take the other block, place it behind your head. I've got my fingers on the back side of that block, so they come down with the block. Aim your elbows overhead. A smile at your efforts. Lengthen the tailbone. Greet your quadriceps and your hip flexors. Om Namah Shivaya Gurave Satchitananda Mottai And straighten the arms. Nish Prapanchaya Shantaya Nirambaya Tejasa Okay, we're going to be rising up to sit so you could take the block and place that aside, curl your chin forward, use your hands, come up and take the right leg and straighten it out to Dandasana. Notice the circulation going down and twist to your left. You may cross your arm over your knee if you like. around to face forward and as you are take the legs out to dandasana mm -hmm. 
now you have your two blankets and you have your two blocks and maybe nearby you have your sandbag your friend the sandbag uh, come down <laughs> and maybe you have the blanket that belongs to your kittens and you might put that over your feet so we take the sandbag now across the top of the thighs I mean, the blanket belonged to me before it belonged to the kittens. And let's take one block between the two blankets, like a little block sandwich, and roll the shoulders open, palm face up. Lengthen the tailbone and let the legs settle down to the ground. Take the gaze now down past the bridge of the nose and in towards the heart. your mind and your heart as if you're watching a body of water become very clear. The ripples are settling. The entirety of the body to relax while your gaze stays in at the heart. The moment your body is being restored. And the neural pathways available again to compassion, mercy. So don't let the mind move over to the to-do list or anything else. Let it rest right here, right now.
lies very still inside the heart. body be deeply renewed and your mind stays in the heart with your eyes gazing in one place. For the next few moments, begin to wiggle your fingers, your toes, roll your head a little bit side to side. And reach down to remove the sandbag if you're using one. You can either roll to your side or come up to sitting. It depends on your preference with the block and the blanket. Please return to your seat. Come back to your upright seat. You know, be really open to the discovery of like what's what's happening now. How is it feeling to be in the fabric of your body and any bit more connected to the native quality of the heart? Welcome to sit really still and just sense the waters of the heart becoming even more reflective. Such that what we see reflected in others and what they see reflected in us is that indwelling nature. And we're inclined to a compassionate or merciful response when any one of us is forgetting our inner nature.
rest in the heart of compassion. The compassion we would extend through ourselves or others when we are forgetting avidya, our indwelling nature. We know the harm that comes from that forgetting. Rest your attention on the compassion you want to extend towards the experience of being forgotten or forgetting or forgetting that in others. Thank you very much, everyone. Thank you for being here. Namaste. are recording so we can be together. <laughs> <laughs>